I was born in the year 1920 in the East End of London, and my father was a well-known wheelwright craftsman. I was apprenticed at Michael and Company in the years of the Depression in the 30s, and I remember my first day at Maples. I was approached by an elder craftsman who questioned me by saying, so you want to be a craftsman, do you, Sonny? Well, they either end their days in the workhouse or the lunatic asylum. representative of our production of which almost the whole is exported to the United States. I am myself personally engaged at this moment on making some pieces which we hope will adorn our stand in the New York Trades Fair. You've got to have a look at this, you've got to go to New York, you know, it's got to be spot on. Yeah, yeah. I, for my part, was apprenticed, as you all know, in the 30s at Maples when conditions were far different from what you chaps know now, but I have tried to pass on to you the virtue of the craft of cabinet making as it was taught to me uh, in those days, and I like to think I have succeeded. You were the first one to come to me as a little boy, weren't you, David? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a bit bigger now than what it was in those days. Um, well, when I first left school, the only thing that I was ever any good at at school were the practical things, woodwork, metalwork, and gardening, and such full things, and uh, when it came to looking for a job, I was looking for something to do with my hands. So I had to look round the local towns and villages to see if I could find something that would interest me. And we came across Mr. Coleman's little workshop tucked away behind the back of a dentist, of all places. And uh, to never forget the first day I went there, we went through these little doors, and tucked up in the corner was Mr. Coleman with one electric light bulb, and you could just about see him for shavings and odd pieces of furniture. Um, I sort of crept in unnoticed and had a look round and thought, oh, blimey, what we got here sort of thing, you know? <laughs> so he asked me what I wanted. I said, well, I was looking for a job. And he asked me, you know, what I could do and that. And I said, well, not very much. I've only just left school, but I was willing to try. So he went to see my parents and found a bit more out about me and decided to take me on. I just happened to see a picture of David in the paper. I feel we made some piece of furniture. Yeah, I did. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, and, uh, I was, well, I didn't know really what I wanted to do. I'd been through all the builders' yards and everything. I wanted to do something a bit more skilled and not the houses together. Or making, well, surprised everybody. I think I just wanted to make furniture, suddenly decided. And, saw the advert and came along and that was it. So there was really nothing to it. I never considered anything else really. Although I didn't know where I was going to work. It just happened. I was asked to begin the manufacture of some Queen Anne walnut chairs. I eventually purchased this beautiful genuine chair now, because this was made in the 18th century, they had little or any of the modern facilities which we enjoy. And the frame is made, as you can see, in three separate pieces of wood, which does lead to a very inherent weakness on the corner, where you try to join the leg to the side members. Instead of making this from the three separate pieces, we use the modern technique of lamination, and we assemble a frame from 
various thin laminations of, of timber with an English walnut slip on the outside and a piece of mahogany on the inside. This is then glued with a modern adhesive and pressed around a mould or a jig. I saw an advert in the local paper and it said high class work and uh, of course where I was it was mass production so uh, I applied and of course as soon as I met Mr Coleman I took to him <laughs> and uh, <laughs> liked the place and the set up so, uh, and uh, he of course took me on and I've been happy ever since. The front legs do require a three inch square of walnut and they are cut out from a specially shaped template on our band saw. When I left the other place, I went down about two and six, three shillings an hour, but down there, I mean, it just bored to tears and just late because you didn't have any interest getting to work, but here, you know, the, the interest's there and there's such a variety. This is finally completed by our woodcarver who puts the shell on the knee and carves that beautiful ball and claw foot. And I believe this takes him from one and a half hours to two hours per leg, which to anybody who sees this, it is quite unbelievable. I've been a woodcarver for 30 years. I came into it, I suppose, because my father was one and um, I liked it a great deal and just stayed as a woodcarver. I, I am a freelance. I don't work for David Coleman exclusively. I do a lot of his work, but I have my own workshops in Shoreditch. Unfortunately, there's no, no one fresh coming into the trade because I suppose the apprenticeship is too long and too complicated. And the tragedy is that the craft is dying out completely. We use veneers because they do portray the most beautiful kinds of wood possible. Uh, this is cut from a very special part of the tree. The whole area of the groundwork is then glued. We still prefer on these fine veneers to still use old-fashioned scotch or hide glue. The veneer is then glued upon the surface and put into our press which glues the piece of veneer to the actual groundwork. And it's all right to say we'll pack up and go somewhere for more money, but it strikes me that anybody can walk into a modern furniture factory and work on a mass production line. Um, they only require one or two tools and, and that's it. Uh, set up and away they go, hammer and bash.
My father was a cabinet maker to start with and my brother, and he gave me an interest in this game. I like making it, but I don't really think I like to live with it, you know. I think really modern furniture is nicer to live with. It's more bright. I think this is a bit drab to live with. Yeah, it's nice to make. It's interesting. Under the right conditions and the right settings, I think it looks absolutely nice. It's good to make the stuff, that sort of stuff, because there is a market for it, and therefore you've got to satisfy a market. There's nothing wrong with liking it. But on the other hand, you should make, I think you should make modern furniture as well, because this is 1970 and not 1770, if you like. Chippendale and all those back in the old days, they made modern furniture. It was modern at the time. They didn't make oak furniture, which was 100 years old. They made modern furniture. And I think everyone, well, every generation should make modern furniture. Or some people should. I've had an argument with an old friend, Mr. Arthur Negus, about this. He says we're a complete fraud because we're making copies of what somebody else has already done. But I'm afraid, so far, I have not found furniture which is better designed, either from the point of use, or for one's aesthetic values even to look at, than the furniture that has been already made as far as the generation. It's suggested we might get a polisher from the Labour Exchange. I phoned the Labour Exchange up and said if they ever heard of a French polisher, and they said it's totally alone. Here we are. And this stuff does bring me finally to this fantastic piece of furniture, which I think you can see. Uh, every drawer is hand dovetailed by wood, which is extremely thin. It's very, very delicate. I have been in the trade the whole of my life. I think, without doubt, it is the finest piece of work that I have seen accomplished by anybody. And it was made by a member of this young staff, who I think is 22. <laughs> I just can't understand why he has immeasurable patience to take a week or longer to produce an article of this quality, and yet, when he has to go from A to B, he can't do the trip fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> I may drive fast, so you say, but I don't know, I seem to have patience with things like that. It's satisfaction, I suppose, from making something like that. <coughs> you've got something when you've finished. We like stomach with a bit of skill. That's the idea. Yes. No matter what the product looks like, we all like to make a good job or something. Must be a vocation, I suppose. <laughs>